had chronic depression ever since he was 12. His father had it too. I was an uppers myself for a few years. He was a high maintenance child. I can't lie to you. Always on the go. Never let me have a moment's peace. Not like his sister. She was a content child. Very happy just sitting by herself. I used to catch a chat in a way to herself when she thought no one was listening. Then, inevitable, I would hear a crash <coughs> and Andrew would have bashed her. Mummy! He, Andrew, was okay. Well, let's say bearable. Till he was eight or nine. No real big incidents till then. Just the constant attention seeking. It was just after his ninth birthday. He, as normal, had had a struggle to find a child to play with him because being with Andrew was hard. He'd come home from the park saying, out of the blue, I have no friends. Well, I said, are you bloody surprised? People find you difficult. You either high as a kite or you block everyone out. But even then, I thought he was controlling it, not it controlling him. But like I say, after nine, it just took control of him. He was a monster. His moods were so black. We used to say they came on the path. Here comes thunderstorm. Black. Black as our boots his moods were. I used to say to Rabbi Rubin, what have I done? What have I done? I shall never know. Then all of a sudden, things just fell apart. He spiralled. When he was 15, he decided he wanted to move out. It lasted a week. I asked him to move back home, but he said no! Over and over again! No, no, no! And then a time I will never forget. That night he came home, he fell into my arms and he sobbed. I could feel his pain. It seemed to grow and expand beside me. I could feel it deep down, like a cancer. So do you see? I tasted it. I felt it. He was hospitalizing that summer. But even then, even then I thought, He's an Isaac, a good, strong boy. He can sort this out. I really thought we'd be able to get past it. I thought it's just a matter of time before we find the right medicine or the right therapist. And things will go back to normal. He just charged himself that summer. Not me, his mother. Him all by himself. Then we had the blackest summer ever. He occasionally went out with Chantelle. That girl. She was his life. Not his girlfriend or anything sexual, just honest, true friends. When they both hit 16, well, it happened. It does, doesn't it? They just drift apart. But she was smashing. I saw her at the... They all came to his. We had planned to meet and have breakfast. Just before it. I called him. I dialed the number. His father must be there. I, I was sat there in the Wimpy, the one on Peckham High Road. But he didn't answer his phone. I thought 
thought, maybe, maybe he slept late or turned it off. Do not ask me why, but I went to Chantel's flat to see if by any chance he might be there. But he wasn't. She was such a smashing girl. But he wasn't. I never saw him again.